Very good. How are you? Uh, should I say welcome back to Miami? <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah, right. You're so you're originally from here. Yes, I am. Uh, nice you to, went to school nice here and all that. Let's open this uh, the shade here where it is. There you go. We can then show the little bit of uh, sun, Miami sun that we have today, because actually it's kind of cloudy. So. Tell me a little bit about you. I mean, like you, you grew up here in Miami, you went to school here, and now you're in Detroit, one of the main designers for Chrysler. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, funny story, so I was actually born in Queens, in New York. Oh, okay. And uh, I was seven when I moved here. So, okay. So I grew up here, you know? And uh, we lived in uh, up in North Miami, um, actually Miami Gardens, right? Yeah, so, beautiful area, actually. Well, <laughs> oh, no, 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 you're in the really. other part? No, 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 not really. Um, <laughs> But you know, it it uh, it did teach me quite a few things. Um, you know, you learn street smarts. You yeah, <laughs> a yeah. lot of things you learn, right? You did well. I mean, <laughs> you survived and you did really well. But uh, you know, it, I was always into art, and uh, my dad was a mechanic, so there was a lot of uh, love for cars already there in the family. And um, yeah, I went to a lot of magnet schools, starting in fourth grade, you know, middle school, and then I went to Dash for high school. So, yeah, from back then, like when you were that, that, that young, you already knew that you wanted to do cars, and that the school system really helped you to go through that? I didn't know I wanted to do cars. Oh, okay. I Not didn't, design I didn't know car design was a profession. Oh, really? Then. You know, it's funny, I meet car designers, and they're like, yeah, I knew I wanted to be a car designer since I was... 10 and I'm like yeah. who were your parents exactly <laughs> because you know well there's one case here uh, maybe you know him Alfonso Alvaiza from Infinity he's mm -hmm. also from Miami he's Cuban oh, okay. yep. he's the head of the design for Infinity now yep. worldwide and he was uh, he grew up here in Coconut Grove and his father was an architect and he had a studio there where his office was like above the garage yep. and he would like design little cars and put them in the little uh uh, how do you call them? The the, the atrium or no 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 where they when you design oh, in, the in scale when you design a building in scale and like yeah. um, so we'll yeah, put the, the little cars models yeah the, little the models cars he'll put like yeah. his little cars in there very cool and uh, one day he said that he heard a, a car coming through the garage and he heard it from above the office and he heard the roar and he looked down the, the balcony and it was a Jaguar yeah. and from that day I mean he had like some impact like that's mm -hmm. something that happened that really really made him think about that. But from that age, uh, he wanted to be a designer. So now I know two uh, worldwide designers from Miami. Yeah, in the auto you, industry. Know, you know, the cool thing is that, uh, you know, because my dad was always fixing cars and always, you know, always, we were always around cars. And it was, so that part of it was always there. And then as a kid, I collected uh, <clears throat> Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars. Yeah, everybody did, models. I guess. And, but I still collect them. Oh, you know, still I, today? Now, now I have thousands. Oh my God. Thousands and thousands. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when I started having my own kids, I use it as an excuse to go to the store and buy cars. I'm like, ah, it's for the kids, oh, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. They're like, don't yeah, touch yeah. them, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, but no, I, I always knew uh, I loved art. I, I just I had a natural ability for it when I was young. And you discovered that like drawing or like yeah, what part so of it? Yeah, so I had- There are several uh, aspects to it, there right? There are a couple of really key, key uh, you know, people. I had a, a teacher named Mrs. Arnold in elementary school who told me to test for this talented program for this magnet school program okay. and that was in third grade so I did that and I was accepted into that program uh, which started in fourth grade and so basically from fourth fourth grade fifth grade and sixth grade I would go uh, once a week to another school oh, cool. and do art all day, wow. the entire day and and uh, and then in middle school, when I started middle school, I it was the first time I had to. So the first portfolio I ever did was in third grade. Wow! To get into the school, so I had to really do a portfolio. Oh, was was it car theme or was? Uh... No, 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 just fine art. You know, a okay. lot of uh, landscapes and still lives, some yeah. figure drawing. You know, um, and then in elementary school, coming up to sixth grade. Um, I then had to do a portfolio to get into the middle school at Northern Middle School in seventh grade. And, you know, we did everything in those art classes. We did, uh, you know, basic pencil drawing and, yeah. and those sorts of things. But we did, you know, um, printmaking with uh, linoleum. We did lithography. Uh, lost wax oh, from, jewelry I mean, like making. a really er yeah, early everything. age doing advanced yeah, yeah, things, yeah. right? I mean, lost wax jewelry making. Um, we did. We learned classical Renaissance painting methods, uh, photography. 
when I say photography, I mean we did develop we, with we, chemicals we took, and everything. We took our own photos. We developed. We developed the film ourselves. We printed our own pictures. All, in the all, all types. Everything. The whole thing. <laughs> um, and so it was a very, very, very comprehensive program. I was very lucky to be able to be part of that. Um, But also very smart, and and probably your parents also help you to direct you into that 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 goal. Because I mean, when you discover your talent, and they put you in the right classes, and like everything, really. Yeah, they were. My parents were always super uh, supportive. They did everything they could. You know, we didn't have much in terms of financial means, but they were always very loving and very supportive. You know, always um, whatever it is that I wanted to do, they were right there and willing to help as much as they could. You know. So which which is more important even than, absolutely than so just... now we fast forward a few years and yeah now we're so... here with one of your final world products yep. I mean like and uh, we, we're in a minivan and like when most people used to I think uh, talk about minivans they talk about something boring but this car it's not only like really really practical I mean like that uh, the amount of technology for entertainment mm -hmm. for the comfort in it, but all that. But also, I think the design in this particular car, this gen new generation, is really, really important, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you because of the, the education that I've had and, and, and the other designers that work for us, you know, we, we maybe all haven't had a similar story, but at least through end of high school and definitely in college, you know, you learn certain things about art and design and, and how to take that and impact people's lives and you know in in the Pacifica uh, we really wanted to make sure that uh, first of all that it was different than everything else out there yeah. that was in the segment we wanted to sort of break the mold and, and create something that everyone would look at and say oh man this is different is this a minivan you know and exactly. we had that question a lot you yeah know, once this, you get into the car really I mean you you're driving and uh, like first of all it's incredibly quiet we're not going that fast but it's incredibly quiet you, and there's traffic around us we don't hear anything nope. we're having this conversation with no extra mics or anything a small little camera and the audio is going to come out perfect because the car allows it to be that, that, that yeah. way no it's super quiet i mean you know the, i have to say the engineering team is is the main uh, group to thank for that right so we can make it look good <laughs> but who we need we need the expertise of our engineering team to To really to make it real, yeah, yeah, to make those things uh, come to life. Yeah, and then sometimes there's a little bit of a fight, right? Because if you want to design something really, really extravagant, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, engineers are like, I don't think yeah. we, it's we like, can do that. It's like brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. I have two brothers and two sisters. And you, you're always fighting, yeah. right? But you love each other, and, and it's and it's uh, that's the great thing at, at uh, FC is we have the, the great culture between design and engineering. Yeah, there's tension and we fight, yeah. you know, of course, but. In the end of you the day, a, we know a, a common goal, so yeah, you all know, both want to, to, be, to do good, good yeah. at the end, right? Yeah, and I mean, for example, I mean, just this the stitch alone that's here that yeah. runs across the IP, and it goes everywhere, I mean, like the seats too. Yeah, I mean, you can't imagine the amount of uh, meetings and discussions it took to make yeah. that what it is, you know. Um, but it really takes the whole team coming together and, and uh, working towards that. So were you more in charge of the interior or of the exterior? Yeah, I was in charge of the interior. Interior, which I guess is, uh, I don't know, is it more, uh, can you do more in the interior than you can in the exterior? Because the exterior is more regulated by like uh, things from safety and yeah. like regulations. Well, hey. Interior, you can go a little bit more crazy with colors, materials and all that, right? Not um, crazy, I, more creative, I'm sorry. I, I can tell you what, there are different challenges because I, I in, in previous roles I've also done exteriors as well yeah. and there are unique challenges so the exterior of the car is challenged by a lot of uh, impact laws you know pedestrian protection um, stuff like that and those things create a, a strong challenge for you to be able to make a good-looking car for example you know if you would look at all of the crash regulations that's what makes the front of the car longer and longer yeah. and longer You have to have a certain amount of crush space so between they can surpass the front that bumper those, and your legs, right? Because yeah, you want those that crash nice, tests and all that, right? Right. And on the interior, we have an equal amount of, if not more, oh, um, really? things that, that are regulated. For example, you know, the airbag deployment that we have to look at on the instrument panel in the airbag. Um, and then for the international markets, the sizes of the radiuses on every little part are important because, for example, in Europe or in China, Um, they have 
regulations that dictate the smallest radius that you can have so that for example for safety you are not yeah, lost so, when you're trying to do something yeah there's that and there's also for example so that objects don't become projectiles so that if you oh, hit your I face see. if okay. you hit your face that nothing could penetrate your eye socket um, so there are all kinds of um, regulations there to protect drivers and occupants in vehicles that we of course um, have to take into consideration when, yeah. we're, when we're doing and that makes like, it even more I mean it's I mean, more fun though you, it's, no, it's, it's, fun, a, but it's like it's a challenge it's like but you know, for, for the consumer I think it makes it like even more impressive when you start to think about how many things going to designing this little button for the volume or like the AC control and all that and you start thinking about I mean there's a lot of work and people just don't even think about that hey you know that's what our job is is there for right we're there to make a buyer's life much easier you yeah. know um, if if we've done our job correctly they get in the car and it's the design of the car is is something that has to work together because really the exterior of the car makes a certain promise to the buyer right? yeah they walk into the dealership and they look at the car and that says something to them it gives them a first certain impression yeah. yeah and then once they get in the car you know sitting in the first time you sit in it and you feel the space that is kind of the uh, does it live up to the promise that the exterior made yeah you know and then getting in and, and driving it um, is sort of what keeps the relationship going yeah what right? completes the circle I guess yeah. and then uh, nowadays especially in the interior I mean people are expecting more and more and more in every mm -hmm. segment I mean and again For this sure. is a minivan a fam family car but also can be used as an office mm -hmm. honestly because those back seats there I mean if you fold them down completely flat yeah. and then you sit in the third row you can be like in a oh, yeah. private jet atmosphere have you, have you tried the third I did row that. already I did that. yeah it's incredible it's amazing so um, that's another aspect of the another challenge of the aspect of designing these kind of cars, right? Mm -hmm. Like incorporating a lot of technology and like, and again like look look good design, so everything it's beautiful and like easy to use. Yeah, and for example, you have to look at <clears throat> all of the materials. You have to make sure that they pass uh, sun load testing, and um, we do abrasion testing on all of the materials to make sure they withstand they'll withstand years and years yeah. and years of abuse, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, all of the things that we managed to put into here, in this interior, I'm still, uh, you know, fascinated by the work that the team did. So for example, if you look in the instrument panel here, um, we created a nice contrast between these more muscular, soft yeah. shapes on the instrument panel, even on the doors, there's a lot of um, emotion and tension surfaces. And then the screen, and this area, which we call the ICS, the Integrated yeah. Center Stack, um, have this nice high-tech piano black finish. Yeah, um, you incorporated the whole screen to this, which is really nice because some of the models have like stacked here in the, yeah, in the, in the front. Yeah. Like to me, it's like in the design process, they put it there and they forgot it. Said, okay, yeah. <laughs> leave it there now because right. I mean, now it's like part of the whole thing. It's really you, know, you whole, can see that it was that was the intention. The whole idea is that everything has one clean motion to it it's clean it's simple and everything is integrated so you feel that it's easier to use yeah. and our system is very easy to use but there's a visual part of that you know absolutely when yeah. someone gets in and it, it looks clean and it looks simple first of all they feel relaxed and they feel like they're in a nice oasis right and then they get in and they can use the system and and understand exactly how yeah, easy and then, it is like, you get this amazing screen which i think uh the Chrysler application of the multimedia system is the basic because not only the screen, the resolution of the screen, but the graphics in it and like the ease of use too. Mm -hmm. It's really, really great. Yeah, I mean, our uh, our user interface team and the Uconnect team uh, work together very closely to always make sure, because we've gotten a lot of accolades on the system. So we try to always um, modern, keep it modern, you know, so we modernize the graphics when we create a new car, but we want to make sure that uh, we don't lose the great functionality of it, you know, the ease of use. Um, so that's one thing that we we made sure that that stays in there. Yeah. And then you know the the all of the other areas too, like down here for example, you know you've got four knobs, you know, 
and you want to make sure if someone wants to shift the car that they don't hit the wrong one. Yeah. That's why these have a rubberized finish on the edge, right? Oh, okay, yeah. And they're all black. Whereas the shifter, it's a unique function, so it's all silver, it's yeah, the metal. Yeah, the size is different. Yeah, and the size is different, yeah. the feel of it is different. So we wanted to make sure to separate them both visually uh, and, you know, color and size to make sure that, you know, even without looking down, when you touch it, you know which one you're touching. Yeah. And the other thing is like the, the use of different materials. I mean, like really, really nice materials everywhere you touch and you put your hands or like you look at, everything looks like first class. Yeah, I mean, I've always, you know, I have a, I have a, a background working for luxury car makers. And so I, I have that in my design DNA, yeah. if you will, right? Um, but of course we have to design a car like this to a certain cost. You know, <laughs> that's the um, challenge. So that was the challenge. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we pushed and pushed, and we wanted to make sure that, you know, with still trying to uh, make a little money, we wanted to make sure that the impression to customers and to you guys that we really upped our game and really gave you something that was was something special. Yeah, and besides the first visual impression, the first feeling is here when you hold yeah. the, the steering wheel, and it really looks feels not only like thick enough like nice you have like you section, have exactly yeah. and everywhere you touch it this is aluminum and you can feel it eh? so, I mean you can feel it's good leather here so it's really really uh, a great feeling again in the minivan which is a segment in which people don't think about much of those right. things right and then you know we we have tons of functionality here you know we've got this timbre door that opens there's a nice closed bin in there cup holders smaller bin down here and then um, here we have this huge drawer wow, that this is really big. pops out. You can fit a, an iPad in there. There's a coin holder. Your wallet, your glasses, yep, everything. everything. Even though you have another thing for the glasses yep. here. Yep. I mean, there's like you, you, you realize in every single inch to, yep. to do something practical, millimeter. right? And then we do, and then we do cool things like this, for example, where you've got uh, the history of the oh, minivan. Oh, okay, that's very cool. Um, and although there were six in history. There were really four major body styles. Okay. So we have, you know, from the original one to the more swoopy one that came afterwards, um, to the town and country that we just replaced, and then the Pacific, the Pacific. and the front okay. sort of going towards the And future, also, so. by taking this out, you can wash it. And yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's exactly. really, really cool. So, and then this is like the first, only the first row yeah, <laughs> we've yeah. been talking about for like oh, yeah. a long time. And then you go to second, third row, and then the back. I mean, yeah. there's like. A lot that you also work in back there, right? Absolutely, yeah. Second row, big thing is the Uconnect Theater back there, right? So uh, when the kids are back there, or even adults, there's plenty to keep one entertained. You can connect your different devices, you know, PlayStation, Xbox, whatever it is. You can watch DVDs, you can play the games that are integrated into the system already. So there's lots to keep you busy. And then if you don't want to be busy, if you just want to relax, you know, the seats are quite comfortable. The panoramic sunroof goes all the way to the third row. Yeah. So you can sort of lay back and relax and um, do that as well. So there's there's something for everyone in this car for sure. Well, that's great, Chris. And uh, so um, we're, when you come down to Miami, I understand that there's like some art of yours at the school that you went out. Like it's there permanent, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I went to school at Dash, yeah. uh, Design and Architecture Senior High, which is you know, only uh, 15 minutes from where we are now. Here in Key Biscayne, yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, you know, I can tell you what, as a, as a high school student, um, I, I already knew then that I didn't want to just be an artist, um, which is why I went to Dash, because they had architecture, fashion yeah. design, landscape design, and they added industrial design my, my, my final year there. Um, so I really learned, you know, the, the business side of, of art, right? How can you use art to create a career? Yeah, because an artist has to eat too. Right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they still have, you know, some of the pieces that I've given them over the years um, of different cars that I've worked on. They have them hanging up in the school. When you walk in the office, there's one right there. And then in the industrial design building, I was I was there on Tuesday to talk to the kids. And yeah. I noticed in the industrial design class, there are a couple of pieces that I gave them that are hanging up in the room. So that's, that's always... Uh, very, cool. very nice yeah, to and see. Yeah, it's going to be there forever. And now, when you drive around Miami, you're going to see your car. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we complete the whole circle. So thank you very much. Really enjoyable thank talking you. to you. And uh, we're going to keep uh, driving here in uh, Miami. And uh, not a very sunny day. So you have to come back for a sunny day then. Absolutely.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.